Hi, this is Peter with CalcBook, and today we're going to be looking at a timber beam design, but we're going to be using a composite member, so an LVL or a PSL or something like that. So just a quick recap, right, for our uh, design criteria and specifications, we use the National Design Specification, also known as the NDS. Um, the NDS has two booklets. It has the specification, and then it also has the, uh, the spec supplement. Uh, so the specification gives you your design procedures, your capacity equations, um, your general you know, adjustment factors, that sort of thing. You can check your flexure, your shear, your deflection, compression, and then obviously your combined loading for all of that. Uh, the supplement, right, is where we get our reference values for the type of material and the, the bending and the shear and all those different, um, uh, you know, reference design values for that specific type of wood. But for composite lumber, right, we do not use that section. We uh, take these numbers from the manufacturer. So these are all uh, composite or engineered lumber, right? So each manufacturer is going to have their own design values that they uh, that they have tested and they, pr and they, they, they publish. So um, you just want to make sure that whichever, uh, you know, area that you are are in, you have uh, the, the manufacturer data um, that's going to be providing the lumber uh, for your project. So we'll be using uh, some manufacturer information to design our beam. So let's take a look at our problem statement, right? We have a header uh, that is going to be, uh, looks like maybe over a doorway, so a pretty long span here, a 16-foot span. Uh, we're going to design an LVL beam for this header. Um, our tributary width is 14 feet, um, and our beam width that we want to design with is going to be five and a quarter inches wide um, to fit in the two by six wall, and then we will figure out what depth we need, um, you know, based on our loading. So we have that 14 foot tributary width. Um, we have a 15 psf dead load and a 20 psf live load, um, and that converts to a 210 pound per foot line load on top of the header, and a 280 pound per foot uh, linear load on top of the header for the live load. Uh, we'll be using ASD for this uh, problem, so let's go ahead and open up CalcBook, and we'll get started on the design. All right, we've got CalcBook open now, so we're going to click into our NDS 2018. Uh, we'll click on our timber member design. And then for this calculation, we're going to need strong axis flexure and then also strong axis shear. So we'll click confirm. Right, we are going to use our beam uh, loading tool. We'll use the ASC7 load combination, so we'll leave that as is. Uh, we have to change our component type, right? We now have a composite lumber. So we have two options here. We have a catalog uh, option where you can select, you know, a specific brand. These are from TJI. Um, and, uh, and you can go that route. Or if you have a, a, a different catalog or a different shape for a different manufacturer, um, you can go with a custom route and just enter in your, your things. So uh, if there's other specific uh, catalog, you know, shapes, we're constantly adding new catalogs to that. So if you have a specific one, please let us know in the comments below. So let's go ahead and start with a custom shape. We'll just go this route. So we'll do uh, update our width. We said we want to do five and a quarter. And we'll update our depth to nine and a quarter. Uh, that's kind of a standard shape there. Um, and then we will enter on our composite uh, uh, reference design values. So there's a lot of options here, right? And um, we only need to really enter the ones that we need for our design. So we're going to need strong axis bending, which is going to be FBX. And I'm just reading here off of one of the TJI tables um, for a, a, a 2.0 E LVL. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll give a snapshot of what that uh, snapshot of what that looks like. But our FB is going to be 2600 PSI. Um, our FBY, right, we don't have weak access, so we can just set that to zero. We don't really need that. Uh, compression parallel to grain, uh, we are not doing that, right? That would be like a column. We don't need that. Our compression perpendicular, we do need that. Um, so our per perpendicular uh, uh, FC perp is 750 PSI. And then weak access is zero. Tension, we don't need. Um, we can either leave it at 1200 or I'll just set it to zero to be sure. Um, our shear capacity in the strong axis, we do need that, and that's 285. Uh, the weak axis, zero. Our modulus elasticity, right, we said it's a, a 2.0, so it's going to be 2 million. And then our E min is going to be 1, let's see here, 1016535. Our shear would be 125,000 psi, and our specific gravity is 0 0.5, so leave that as is. Um, and then before we do our uh, adjustment factors, right, let's just set this to ASD so we get the right adjustment factors to update. Our load duration, right, this is going to be using uh, occupancy live load so we can set that to 1. Um, and then moisture content, right, uh, composite members are intended to be in dry, so this is set to dry. If you have wet, uh, you'll just want to talk with your manufacturer and see if they can provide you some reduction factors for that. 
Uh, no temperature condition, uh, it's not repetitive, and then our volume factor and then our modulus elasticity, wet surface factor, leave those as one. So we can go to our beam loading. Right, our beam length is 16 feet. Uh, for shear, we're going to set it to zero because we know we have a pinned connection. Uh, and then for the deflection and moment, we'll set it to eight. And also just want to highlight here, we've added this new uh, beam loading visualiz visualization tool uh, so we can see all the loads that we're adding to the beam here so that we've got the self weight here at 11 pounds per foot. And then we'll go ahead and add our dead load. Uh, it's going to be a uniform load. And we said that is uh, 0.2110 uh, kips per foot. And then we'll add our live load, also uniform load. And this is going to be uh, 0 0.280 kips per foot. And then if we want to toggle this over to D plus L, then we can see um, our shear, moment, and deflection diagrams. So uh, now we can go and head over to our different calculation tabs. <clears throat> so for deflection, right, we are over by about 60%. Um, our K sub CR factor, I believe, is correct at 1.5. Yeah, so 1.5 for structural composite members uh, in dry service condition. So we'll leave that as is. So we'll need to come back and, and make sure we uh, uh, decrease that. But let's take a look at our two strength uh, calculations here. So our bracing configuration, um, we'll just say it's fully braced for the purpose of this calculation. Um, it looks like we're just barely making it, right? Um, and we can take a look here at our demand, right? We're losing our load combination, LC2. Um, our bending stress is just going to be M over S, so about 2567 PSI, so really close to our limit. Um, we don't really have a lot of modifications factors here, right? Because this is all engineered lumber. We do have to still calculate our beam stability factor, but because it's braced, it's 1. And then we get our uh, capacity there, our demand to capacity of 0 0.99. Uh, for shear, right, we uh, well, let's, we do want to check end bearing. Uh, so we'll go ahead and enable that. Um, we'll assume that we have a, a three and a half inch bearing length, right? This is uh, what is the member bearing on. So this in case, this case would be like a four by four post or something like that. Um, so we'll just leave that as is. Right, we have our shear demand, again, using the D plus L load combination, um, our uh, end bearing stress, and then our shear stress. And again, not a lot of uh, factors here to check because we are using engineered lumber. Um, and then we end up with a 0 0.29 for our bearing strength um, and, uh, and a 0 0.43 for our shear strength. So OK there. So really, this comes down to our deflection of 1.63, which is sort of to be expected for a long span um, timber design. So let's go back and go to the next size up, which is going to be 11 and a quarter, and see how that does for our deflection. And that puts us just below 1, so 0 0.91 for our deflection. And we can just double check that our uh, bending, shear, and end bearing are all OK there. So um, that is a uh, composite lumber, an LVL member design in CalcBook. We hope you enjoyed the video. Again, if you have additional catalogs you want us to incorporate into the, uh, the composite member design, please let us know. We can get those in. Um, and uh, we hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you next time.